This is the chemical kinetics podcast on energy of reactions in which the heat of combustion, heating values, and the adiabatic flame temperature will be discussed. Under constant pressure, the total differentiation of H of Tp, the dp term is zero, giving the following result. If this result is integrated between step one, uh, state 1 and state 2, and using the expression for C sub p, then the expression for the change of enthalpy between state 1 and state 2 is derived. As a consequent of the first law of thermodynamics, we do not have to deal with absolute energy values, such as total energy of a molecule, but the relative energy values. In addition, since the first law says that we only have to deal with the before and after states, we can pick an arbitrary convenient reference state and compare all values relative, relative to it and not even worry about how we got there. In fact, whether the actual process goes through this state is irrelevant. The heat of formation uses the individual atoms as a base reference at standard temperature and pressure, meaning 20, 2, uh, 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere. These individual atoms are defined to have a heat of formation of zero. In the computing of the enthalpy between state 1 and state 2, we will take a detour through this reference state. For example, the following uh, molecules have a zero enthalpy of formation, H2O2, graphite, and nitrogen. Once again, as a consequence of the first law of thermodynamics, we can use heats of formation to compute the heats of combustion. Essentially, we create a fictitious energy path. We start with the reactant molecules and break them apart into individual atoms. The energy needed to do this is the heat of formation. We then recombine these atoms into product molecules. And once again, the energy needed to do this is the heat of formation. Obviously, the actual path going from reactants to products does not follow this path. But using the first law of thermodynamics, we can use this as the reference states for the computation. A standard measurement used in industry is the heat content of a species, meaning how much heat is released when a species is combusted. Two values are used. The first is the higher heating value. This is the thermodynamic heat of combustion, meaning the enthalpy change of combustion at constant temperature. The second value is the lower heating value. This is where the heat of vaporization is subtracted from the higher heating value. The justification for this is that the water is in vapor state after combustion, and this vaporization process requires energy. The difference between the higher and lower energy value or heating values is basically related to the heat of vaporization of water. It is for this reason that the lower heating value is useful in the, com in the computation and design of boilers. This is a general comparison of the heating values of various groups of fuels. One notable fact is that the hydrocarbons have a much higher heating value than the typical biofuels such as alcohol and esters, which are derived from, for example, rapeseed oil. It is also noteworthy that hydrogen has the highest heating value. These are the heating values of the series of hydrocarbon fuels, increasing in number of carbons. Methane has the highest heating value among them. Among the esters, those fuels similar to rapeseed or other oils for biofuels, the larger esters have a higher heating value. Another class of biofuels are ethanols. Other than methanol, these have a heating value of around 30 millijoules per kilogram. The enthalpy of the species, or set of species, is a function of temperature. For example, the total enthalpy of a set of reactions is a function of temperature, as it is the total enthalpy of a set of products. This means that to find the gain or loss of energy to a system, we need to know the beginning and ending temperatures. It can also be seen from this figure that, for example, in an adiabatic process, meaning there is no change in energy from reactants to products. There is an increase of temperature. The energy is not lost to the environment, but given to the products in raising their temperature. We will see in the next slides that this is defined as the adiabatic flame temperature. Adiabatic flame temperature is important to combustion 
because it represents the highest possible temperature a given process can achieve. It provides another tool to compare fuels. The term adiabatic is that no heat is lost to the environment, i.e. the enthalpy of the system stays constant. The energy produced by the reaction is put into raising the temperature of the products. Of course, no process is perfect, and not all the heat can be converted to temperature, so this represents the highest theoretical limit, but it gives a good idea of the potential of a fuel. The adiabatic flame temperature is solved for by setting the heat of combustion of the reactants equal to the heat of combustion of the products. The term adiabatic means that there's no loss of heat. This means that all the heat in the reactants goes to products. For example, let us look at the combustion of methane in air. The temperature of the heat of combustion of the reactants is known, namely the standard temperature of 298, so the standard enthalpy of each of the reactants can be used. The enthalpy of reactants is their sum. However, the temperature of the products, i.e. the adiabatic flame temperature, is not known, and this has to be solved for. The main problem is that the heat capacity is also a function of temperature. However, if we assume an average heat capacity, then we can have one linear equation with one unknown T. The standard least heats of formation, 1 atmosphere and 298, for both reactants and products can be looked up. Since the heat capacity changes with temperature, we can make the assumption and choose the heat capacity at a temperature somewhere between 298 and the expected flame temperature. In this case, we choose 1200 degrees K. We can use these values for the flame temperature to be solved for. Here are some examples of the adiabatic flame temperature in both air and pure oxygen for the stoichiometric full complete combustion. The adiabatic flame temperature in air is always lower than that of pure oxygen because even though the stoichiometry between the fuel and oxygen is the same in both cases, in air, not only the must, must the combustion products have to be heated up, but also the inert nitrogen. The adiabatic flame temperature peaks around equivalence ratio of 1.0. In one sense, that is where the most efficient stoichiometric combustion occurs. However, closer inspection is that notices that the peak is a bit to the rich side. The ex accepted explanation for this dissociation effect at higher temperatures, the equilibrium, particularly CO2, is shifted toward the dissociation products, for example, CO. This is an example of the fact that incomplete combustion can always occur. We do not always have the ideal case.